country, in the three countries, and our enemies throughout Latin America. The chief says it'll be very helpful. It's always quite a security problem. They tell me the embassy is being instructed to take very special precautions to avoid any unpleasant incident involving the chief of justice. Uh, although unrelated to the OAS summit, your trip to the president of so high United States officials in Latin America will arouse public interest. Uh, I would uh, think it'd be good if you would tell him that I just ran across this in my intelligence reading mm -hmm. and that uh, I would like to make a plane available to him instead of him riding around down there, whatever he's going in. Right. I think it, uh, uh, it would, would reduce the opportunities for incidents mm -hmm. and I think it would uh, make him live longer and uh, he's always very shy and this is a we do it for generals, and we do it to, for uh, legislators and other departments, and I don't know why Justice shouldn't, and uh, I don't want to be doing it to him direct because I don't want him to think I, I try to curry favor or something, but I think if you just told him you were talking to me, and I said I saw where he's going, and I thought he ought to go from the plane, if it's all right, you were going to tell me that he would go if I if I'd ordered it. Well, that's wonderful. All right, sir. That's right. I'm doing. Have you got a minute on the phone? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, I asked Carol uh, about that uh, matter uh, of the contract, you know what I mean? Sure. And uh, she said that uh, they have, haven't heard a word that they uh, uh, received the contract with changes in it and that they sent it to the young man and uh, that uh, they haven't heard anything beyond that. So that drew a blank. Well, now, what do you think? How do you interpret that? Do you mean that the the people up up, uh, up in New York uh, took the changes Carol suggested yes. and uh, then they sent it to the principal? Yes, sir. And, uh, and uh, he has it, uh, but I don't think he's had it just a day or so. So that uh, doesn't, you know, doesn't indicate anything one way or the other. Is there any uh, difficulty up there? Apparently not. Uh, there's still one little minor thing that hasn't been worked out, but apparently the uh, people in New York went along with uh, the uh, uh, proposal for change. In your judgment, has he got a good thing up there? Uh, yes, subject to uh, the all-important all consideration of what kind of a fellow this is. But uh, with that uh, reservation, I don't know the fellow. That reservation this is a very good thing. And wonderful for a kid. And uh, I don't have any problem about that. Of course, nothing's any good if the fella's not a uh, good fella to work with. And it's not worth the thing. Now, I got one other thing to tell you. You remember a long time ago, uh, um, I told you that I was going to talk with the chief about the uh, New York Times? No, I don't remember. Well, the New York Times uh, is going to make a, is doing an article or a series of articles on the uh, uh, Warren Report. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and I told you that I would talk with the chief and see that... Uh, yes, I remember that. ...his top man got touched. Well, there's been a remarkable bit of information that's come through on that. Uh, his top man uh, worked uh, very extensively with a New York Times reporter. Uh, the New York and also gave this New York Times man access to all of the lawyers who had been on the staff. The New York Times man worked with all of them, wrote up five articles, and uh, which were very favorable. And then a decision, yeah, then first a decision was made to cut them down to one chapter. And then a decision was made to kill them, kill the whole project. Now, I have asked uh, the chief uh, to find out uh, for me uh, discreetly, if he could, uh, the name of the uh, Times reporter. And uh, he says he, he will, and he should have that today. He says he could find it out without any awkwardness. But isn't that an, an amazing story? Yeah, yeah it is. Uh, 
They started there, our friends up there. Uh, every one of y'all won't believe this, but uh, every man that crosses them in any way gets murdered. Mm -hmm. They started all this stuff. Uh, they, they created all this stuff, just like they have in Manchester. And if we'd had anybody less than the attorney, uh, the chief justice, I would have already been indicted. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that's the way this operation runs. Mm -hmm. Of course, everybody's got skeletons, and it happens they pick out the ones with the worst skeletons first, but they'll get to them. Eddie Weisel told me that in 1960, and I just couldn't believe it. I just didn't think, I was just too naive to think anything like that in the world happened. But I, I see it just plain as day now, just as clear as anything. Yeah. Powell took it yesterday, and he's a no-good bastard. We've always known that, but he just uh, went high-wide and handsome until uh, he uh, crossed him on poverty and told Shriver that he'd have to quit to paying these folks uh, to uh, uh, go out and play tennis, and he criticized them a little bit, and that uh, they started on him, and they, uh, our friend up in New York moved, and he's gone, got Dodd, he's got uh, Earl Clements, he's got Bobby Baker, he's got anybody that's tied in, and uh, I'm surprised that you got confirmed if he, if he hadn't have thought that you were too smart for him, but they do it with every one of them. Well, I, I don't... I don't, I think Walter Jenkins' problems had something to do with it. I think it's this, this whole thing, bell leaving, I think that, that's tied into it in a general way. I think this book coming out in 67 instead of 69 is part of it. Uh, I think the, uh, the Post and the Newsweek are tied into it. I think Look is tied in with them. I don't know whether I've never been able to get the, the stock holdings at the foundation. Uh, but uh, I'll bet you four dollars that that outfit's tied in with RCA and with Look and with the Graham entries. I understood that Kennedy told Phil Graham if he'd go buy Newsweek that they'd get him the money. I, I never have been able to know it, but when I when, when I see these things and just see them taking over the whole damn paper, bringing in all the kids, I just know it's just not natural. Yeah. Throwing out people like the, uh, uh, Russ Wiggins stuff like that. This is just not a normal thing to do. Yeah. These things are not just uh, accidental. Uh, they, they start campaigns on them. Hell, when Mike Bundy crossed them here one time, why they just refused to invite him. They wouldn't see him. They did everything until he was crawling on his belly. And then when he criticized me, they let him come back in for a day or two. <laughs> and that, that, that's the way they operate. Goes out and arrests a goddamn horse, and takes him away from the felon, takes him over to his lot, keeps him for a week, and then does it all in the name of charity and uh, because it's a charitable act, he was justified. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think they prove that they like horses. They might try it out on people sometimes. I think it would be awfully good if they did. <laughs> Well, I'll see what I can do about following through on this other thing. Carefully. Okay, my friend. Thank you. I need to see you some of these. They say, by the way, I'm, I'm naming, uh, I've got here now, I guess, uh, I just had it, I held it up to see you. We'd like to see you. Uh, they've recommended a fellow named Charles Austin, professor of art at City College, New York, to uh, uh, Austin, Eddie Weisel and Jack Blaine and Austin Krim and all of them. Uh, uh, say this fellow is a great guy, he's a professor of art, he teaches art students, he's a U.S. art representative of the Brussels World Fair, he's part of a permanent collection of the Museum of Modern Art, he hangs the Whitney Museum and several colleges, private collections, and worked on murals in many schools and hospital buildings. Charles Austin, uh, they want to put him on and Instead of uh, uh, somebody that Ms. Kennedy is recommending, I'm kind of reluctant to... Uh, is that on the, on the Kennedy Center? Yeah, I'm kind of reluctant to do it because uh, she has recommended them all. She just takes it like she owns it. Uh, instead of Catherine Dunham, she's a dancer. And uh, they want Ms. Kennedy recommend that Dunham replace Ralph Bunch, uh, who doesn't come to the meetings much. Is Austin a Negro? Yes. No, oh, that's good. Uh, as, uh, you know, I, I think Roger Stevens has done wonderful, Mr. President. Uh, has uh, Roger been told about this? 
Well, yes, Roger recommends her for Miss Kennedy there. Well, he's trying, you know, to give her, keep her quiet. That's his part of his job, but uh, he doesn't like it either. Uh, well, you here's who uh, here's who we got. Uh, here's what Macy says. He just does what she says. Terms of six members of the board expired September the first, and seven vacancies called for the resignation of Ernie Breach. Jeff Kenner set uh, called the established board of trustees. The board composed of 45 members. 30 general trustees appointed by the president, six members of Congress, and nine ex officio members. Uh, the board of trustees shall construct the Smithsonian Institute for the funds raised by voluntary contributions. JFK Senate. The board's authorized list and step for the Smithsonian Institution. Old uh, gift. The board shall have the usual fire of trustees, and so forth. I recommend the following appointment action. Roger L. Stevens, Chairman. Richard Adler, composer. Arthur Schlesian. Uh, Robert W. Woodruff, age 76. That's my Woodruff and Coca-Cola. Catherine Dunham. Robert Lehman. Replace Richard Reynolds. I recommend General Taylor to fill the unexpired term with breach. Taylor, along with his many other experience, has been president of the Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts. He is recommended by Mr. Kennedy. Yeah. What I would do, if, if I followed my judgment, I would take highly qualified people that are Johnson people and put every goddamn one of them on there. Mm -hmm. I don't know why we continue to just to let them run things. Well, you've got... Uh... Uh, there's Bobby Lehman, Bob Woodruff. Oh, no, Bob Woodruff's not my man. He was recommended for them. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, he'd probably just soon get off. Uh, no, you know, no. You know, you know Bob Woodruff. He's a... I know it, but I don't imagine he wants to. I imagine he had his pride hurt. He, last time I saw him, he had some old federal trade, and he, he was just wounded. He said it was terrible. I don't imagine that. The only question is, it's the basic thing. I know that you feel we ought to give a little to them, but how do we, when they just cut our throats out, they want to put us in jail? Well, you know, I... That's the smart thing to do? Well, Look, you see this son of a bitch last night on television this last year? Uh, no, I heard about it. You know, I was over at the end, but I heard about it. Johnson gets the Dirksen down at the ranch and lays up with him and keeps him down at that ranch and... And he's his buddy, and that's who's running the government. Yeah. Now, Dirksen came down with Mansfield, and came down with Ford and Albert, and they came on a bipartisan thing, and they all agreed on what I was doing, and they approved what a Democratic president asked them to. Then he gets out, and he tries to, tries to make it appear there's something evil, and I've turned Republican. My message last night was a Republican message on account of Dirksen. Miss Slater. Is Mrs. Boozer there? Would you come up, please? 